Hey guys, welcome to Lingua Marina. Today's my favorite topic, but also today's the topic that makes me a little bit anxious because we're going to talk about American pronunciation. And um, I'm not a native speaker, but what I love doing is noticing how people talk, how they pronounce certain things, and then, you know, just explaining them to myself. But of course, I'm not a professor in linguistics who knows every single detail. So the way I explain things on this channel is the way I hear them. But today we actually have a native speaker and the teacher joining us. Her name is Angela. Some of you already know her because she teaches one of the courses on LinguaTrip, Intermediate to Advanced. She has classes where she talks about American pronunciation and she explains uh, some of the nuances of American culture. And today Angela is going to help me explain all of the different ways. Oh my God. And there are so many that you pronounce letter T in English because it can be a glottal stop, it can be a flap T, it can be a D, sometimes it almost sounds like an R. You know, if you've been watching this channel, you know that there are so many ways how you can pronounce letter T. So today we're going deep on this topic. I am super excited to welcome Angela. Hey Marina, thank you so much for having me here today. And hello everyone. So okay Angela, my question is, how do we pronounce the letter T. So the letter T is a really complex letter uh, when it comes to pronunciation. And if you are learning English, you know that basically every letter is pretty complex <laughs> in English. The true T sound is what most people learn right away. And that's a great place to start. So you're just going to bring your tongue up to the roof of your mouth and it's going to touch the inside of your top front teeth here. Sorry, I'm like in my mouth. All right. But you're going to bring your tongue up there and then you're going to aspirate it. That's a great place to start. That is the true T sound. But there are such a variety of ways of saying the T, especially it, when we're speaking naturally. So we're going to cover some of the basics today. Okay, let's start with the true T. How do we know if the word is pronounced with the true T? Like this is, this is also so confusing. Like, how do you know? Like, where is that sign from above that tells you, Marina, this is a true T and this is a flap T. Okay, so the true T sound is just that regular pronunciation of T, like I mentioned before, and you use the true T sound usually when the word starts with the letter T. So for example, top, 10, teacher. T -t -t -t. Today, I take the test. Top 10, top 20%, whatever it is. So when the word starts with a T, Normally, it's a true T sound. Now, there are a bunch of exceptions, just like everything in English. For example, the consonant blend TR, that's going to be more of the CH sound combined with R. So for example, TRY is not going to be TRY, it's going to be ch TRY, TRY, TRAVEL not the true T sound, to ride, to ravel. If we're gonna work together, you might wanna try trusting me a little bit. But most words that start with T are going to be that true T sound. Now, it's not just if the word starts with T, lots of times if the stressed syllable of a word starts with T, we are also going to use the true T sound. Pretend. So in the word pretend, the stressed syllable starts with T. Pretend, pretend, right? So we're going to use the true T sound. And then we can stop pretending like we have anything in common anymore. Hotel, until, all of those words start the stress syllable with T, we're gonna use the true T sound. Until that time, there were three things that I was always afraid of. A job, a bust, and jail. The true T sound can also be used when there is a double T, okay, like in the word attire, but be careful because a lot of double T uh, words will sound like a fast D, but 
A tire is an example of a double T that sounds like a true T. What's the attire? Another word that I love for practicing the true T is tattoo. We have two true T sounds, two true T sounds, okay? It starts with a T, ta, and then two, tattoo. So tattoo is a great word to practice when you're practicing the true T sound. So a tattoo is registered in the criminal tattoo database. Another trick is when T comes after a consonant, except for the letter N, okay? The letter N and the letter T have a little bit of a difficult relationship, but if a T comes after any other consonant, a lot of times it's going to be pronounced as the true T. For example, actor, doctor, empty, okay? So we're going to be using the true T sound in those words. Marina, can you try to pronounce some words with the true T? Tell, taxes, attack, protect. Great, tell, taxes, attack, protect. Makes sense. Son, I pay taxes. You said something about aspirated. How about when the letter T is not aspirated? Okay, so this is called the held T. Some people call it the stop T, all right? And basically, you're gonna do the same thing with your mouth as you would for the regular true T. So, tongue to the roof of your mouth, touching the inside of your front teeth. What you're gonna be doing here, though, is instead of releasing it, instead of aspirating it, instead of pushing air through, you're going to just stop. That's why it's called a stop T, right? You're not going to aspirate it. You're not going to push air through. So it's a little hard to distinguish for non-native speakers because sometimes they might think that you're just not pronouncing the T but we actually are. Let me give you some examples. Most of the time the held T is going to be pronounced at the end of a word, okay? So when a word ends in T, lots of times it'll be that held T. So, bought. My tongue is still up there, but I just didn't release it. I didn't say bought. I didn't say ball. I said bought. Not, not, right? I'm not saying naw, I'm saying not, held T. It's not like that, I'm always a jerk. Maybe you should have thought of that before you built the big dumb thing. All right, Marina, your turn. Try these held T words. Pot, pot, oh yeah, pot versus attack, right? Aspirated, attack, not aspirated, pot, bet, cat. There you go, pot, bet, cat. I bet I could be one if I wanted. Okay, this is where I get confused a bit. Where is this difference between the healthy and the glottal stop? Like this is such a minor nuance that when I just listen to native speakers, I'm not really able to tell, but there is actually a difference. So let's dig deeper. Okay, honestly, Marina, this is a really good observation. Like you being a little confused on this is totally normal. It can be kind of hard to differentiate between the held T and the glottal stop T. So let me try to explain this as easily as possible. An example that you can always find, whether it be like, you know, reading about pronunciation, uh, hearing about it on TikTok, is uh-oh, all right? So when a child makes a mistake, a lot of times we will say, or they will say, uh-oh, uh-oh, oh no, uh-oh. Uh -oh. That uh-oh is a perfect example of how to use the glottal stop. We aren't making the same mouth formation like we do for the true T or even the held T. It's coming from our throat, okay? Uh-oh. So say uh-oh slowly. Uh-oh. Uh-oh is a really, really great expression to help you practice the glottal stop. 
when do we use it now? We use it before a weak syllable that ends in the N sound. Mmm. So, let's look at examples. This is gonna help you a little bit. Eaten. Eaten. That T is followed by a weak N sound. Mmm. So, we are not going to say eaten. We're gonna say eat in eat in now listen if i don't use the glottal stop if i don't say any kind of t pronunciation ian ian that does not work it's eaten we haven't eaten in three days let's look at some other ones with that weak n sound button button curtain Manhattan. My parents are in Manhattan right now. Miss you. No. <laughs> Manhattan. Written. Just, just push that button right there. Hey, Cash, you want me to tighten this? If you and another one for the glottal T. All right. When a syllable ends in T and it is followed by a consonant sound, we're going to use the glottal stop. For example, football. I'm not saying football. Let's play football. No, I'm saying football. Okay, now some people think that the glottal stop, remember that there's nothing there, but there is. If I didn't pronounce the T, it would be football. Let's play football. No, let's play football. What? The word what, okay? When, especially when we're speaking, glottal stop, what? Witness, witness, not witness, witness. Put him back on the witness stand if you don't believe me. Certain, mountain, fountain, kitten, kitten, kitten. Good. Certain, fountain, mountain, kitten. And I'm not certain that you really understand this trade. What? Mountain bluebird. Now, sometimes Americans do not pronounce T at all when they're talking. I don't know if you've seen this uh, TikTok, but it's basically a video. It says, if you are from California, you do not pronounce the letter T in major city's name in, um, in California. And they give this examples and Californians are reading um, the names of those cities out loud. And there's Santa Monica, which is written with a T. And they're like, what? Sacramento. Santa Cruz, like in California. Monterey. Huntington. Sacramento. And th this is a super exciting. I love this TikTok. I love how it illustrates the T that is not pronounced or like the word center, right? It sounds like there is no T at all. Angela, can you please explain? All right, exactly. Finally, we are at the silent T, okay? Um, a lot of people think the held T or the glottal stop T are silent, but they're not. But we do have times where we do not pronounce the T at all. I think silent letters are probably like the evil uh, part of American English or any English pronunciation. So let's look at the silent T. Usually, if the T comes after an N, we drop that T and we do not pronounce it. Center. Center. No. Center. So almost like we're spelling it C-E-N-N-E-R. Center. I'll meet you in the center of town, not center. 20 miles outside city center. Internet. Internet. Instead of internet, right? I use the internet to do research. Instead of, I use the internet to do research. Internet. I don't know. I can't even say it with the T. All right, a lot of times with I don't know, we will say something like, I don't know. Even with text speech, we will spell don't know, D-U-N-N-O. I don't know, I don't know. I mean, I don't know, maybe you'll surprise yourself and end up having a good time. Also, when the T is in between two consonants, except for the letter R, all right? So, for example, Christmas. The T is in between two consonants, S and M. Christmas. 
We don't say Christmas, we say Merry Christmas. Christmas? It's not Christmas. Give me the facts. That could be kind of confusing sometimes, but luckily we don't really use fax machines anymore. Okay, some people might, I don't know. But fax, F-A-C-T-S. So that would be a silent T. It's in between a C and an S, two consonant sounds, fax. And it sounds exactly the same as fax, F-A-X. Then we have something like just saying. Right? I'm just saying, maybe you should ask for help. Instead of saying, I'm just saying, maybe you should ask for help. We drop that T. We do not pronounce it. So just sounds like just, right? Just an S. I'm just saying. All right, now let's hear it like in a sentence. Come on, just come to the party. I'm not saying, come on, just come to the party. Just is followed by come. So that T is in between two consonants. It's in between the S and the C of come. So we're gonna make it silent. Just come. Come on, just come to the party. Just, just come over here. Okay, now there are times where you can see a combination of letters in a word and know that the T is silent. For example, S T E N, listen. We're not saying listen, listen, silent T. Hustle, S T L E. Lots of times words with S T L E will have a silent T. Hustle, or F T E N, silent T. Often, soften. I'm not saying often. I go to the park often. I go to the park often. Now again, this will kind of depend on how people speak and their accents, etc. But try it out often. Something to soften the blow. Okay, one more thing about the silent T. Every single letter in the English alphabet at least has like one word that it won't be pronounced in, okay? Even though it's written there. I think J is one of the ones that's like, it's really rare. Uh, for it to be silent, but we'll have something like a borrowed word from another language, like jalapeno, we'll say that with an H sound um, when we write it with a J. But anyway, T is going to be silent in some words. There might be words that are borrowed from other languages, etc. So things like ballet, gourmet, we are not going to pronounce the T there. She's a ballet dancer. They love to be complimented. Disappointed, printer, interview, interview, internet, internet. I went on the internet and uh, there's pictures of them. Just a quick disclaimer, there are so many versions of English, honestly. And if somebody tells you 100% you have to pronounce internet and all of the other options are wrong, stop learning wrong English. This is not the way it works with a language because a person who is from Great Britain would say internet in internet, internet. Is this on internet? <laughs> so they would pronounce this, uh, this T here. Angie, is the internet working? So with English, just like with anything in this life, be open to different ways people pronounce certain things. Okay, thank you, Angela. Now, here's a big doubt a lot of non-native speakers have. T sounds like a D sometimes and yes because i've been living in the u.s for several years now i started saying water <laughs> not water 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 almost like a d slash r even so what's the rule here i actually love this one this is called the flap t or the fast D, okay, the quick D. I'm gonna call it the quick D, all right? But it's called the flap T. This is when T sounds like a very quick D. Very big in American pronunciation. So when the letter T is in between two vowel sounds or diphthong, all right, we're going to use that quick D. So city, right? I'm not saying city. It's in between two vowel sounds. So, quick D, city, city. Pretty, not pretty, pretty. 
Beautiful. Nope. Beautiful. Quick D. Now, it's a quick D. I'm not saying beautiful. I'm not saying pretty. Let's go to the city. That's a hard D. It's a quick D. City. Pretty. Beautiful. This really is a beautiful city. Very important. Pay attention if the T is in between vowel sounds or a diphthong in a sentence. So, I caught a fish. Okay? Caught. That's in between a diphthong, that T, diphthong, and a vowel sound. So, instead of I caught a fish, it's I caught a, I caught a fish. Or, I gotta go. Right? Um, this is a really popular way of speaking. So, instead of saying I got to go, we say gotta. G-O-T-T-A, we'll even write it like that, okay? Like if informally, obviously, but gotta, I gotta go. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, gotta, I gotta go work. And just be careful because sometimes, you know, words will sound exactly the same, but one's written with a D and one with a T. So for example, metal and metal. Both of them sound the same, but they are two different words. Or leader and leader sound the same. So be careful with vocabulary. You won't run into too many problems with that though. But I would definitely suggest using that quick D uh, and practicing it. Computer, better, great idea, great idea, great idea, great idea. Wait a second, wait a second. That sounds like a great idea. I love Google Calendar. Okay, Angela, you were talking about TR before. What about TH? I'm gonna take an opportunity to shout out our new pronunciation guide, Pronunciation 2023, that Venya and I worked on and the whole team. Um, but Time. the pronunciation of TH is really interesting. There are two different sounds for it. And Venya goes into detail um, in the letter T. Uh, about TH. So let me kind of pull what we have in the guide and show you what we got about TH. So first we have the voiced TH. Voiced means your vocal cords are going to vibrate. So you're gonna put your tongue in between your teeth and your vocal cords are gonna vibrate when you aspirate the sound. So that's the voiced th. Let's practice some words from the guidebook now. This, though, father, their gathering was ruined by the weather. Other than that, I rather not bother him. Well, I have one more story to type before I put it in the mail, but other than that, we're done. I love other than that for practicing that th voiced other. Th other than that, other than that, other than that. Let's go on to the unvoiced TH sound, which means our vocal cords are not going to vibrate. So it's going to be thing. Thank you. Pathetic. Admittedly, I do check his Facebook like every day to see if he's dating somebody new, which is so pathetic. I thought your 13th birthday was on Thanksgiving. He needs strength to get through Thursday's exam. Well, the thing is, I love you. Okay, so you can't always tell if a TH is going to be voiced or unvoiced, all right? But usually the function words that we use in English are going to be voiced. For example, the, than, this, that. And lots of times if they're not function words, they'll be unvoiced, okay? Thumb, think, thought. All right, but that's not always the case. So you can just start there, but keep in mind that that might change. One last thing before we stop talking about TH, all right? I wanna look at two common mistakes with TH. The voiced TH. Lots of English learners will pronounce it like a D. So instead of saying they, they'll say something like day, all right? So they went to the park. They might say that they went to the park. So keep that in mind. It's not a D, it's th, they. And nothing has changed but the weather. Then we have unvoiced. A lot of times they will say 
like a T, the true T sound. So they'll say something like, thank you, instead of thank you. Now, for American pronunciation, thank you is not correct. So we say thank you. Um, but those are just some common mistakes. If you said thank you to me, I'm going to know that you're saying thank you. But if you want to practice, you know, American pronunciation, check out the th. th. <laughs> as you bring your awareness back to your breath and leave you with this thought today. Angela, this is super helpful. Thank you so much. Any other tips you have for the letter T? Hmm, good question. Um, so honestly, while we're here, I always love talking about ED endings whenever I'm talking about pronunciation with D or T because this is a really common mistake. ED endings are super, super important in English. Why? Because all of the regular verbs in the past simple or in their past participle forms have ED endings. So you're using the pronunciation of ED a lot in your speech. There are adjectives with ED endings too. I just want to talk about the verb ED endings. Um, there are three different ways to pronounce ED endings, not one, all right? A lot of people think ED endings are pronounced id, but it's pronounced id or t or d. So I think it's a good idea to review that as much as possible. In the uh, Pronunciation 2023 Handbook, there is an exercise for classifying uh, ED endings. I think it's in letter D, but that's a really good thing to take note of when you are practicing verbs, okay? In the past simple or their past participles. Everyone focuses on irregular verbs, but those ED endings, like when someone mispronounces that, it's kind of a dead giveaway that they're a non-native speaker, which is okay, but sometimes it could make communication difficult. So let's practice uh, what I'm talking about. If a verb ends in T or D, the ED ending will be pronounced id. Want ends in a T, wanted. Need ends in a D, needed, pasted, painted. So if the verb ends in a T or a D, you're going to use that id ending, wanted. I never accepted that I had an illness. You know, I needed to do it. Now, things get a lot trickier, <laughs> sorry, trickier when we're talking about T or D, okay, pronunciations of ED. Sorry if this is confusing, um, but, T, okay, let's talk about the T ending. If the verb ends in an unvoiced consonant sound, remember unvoiced means your vocal cords are not vibrating. If it ends in an unvoiced consonant sound, you're going to say T for ED. This takes practice, you know, just pay attention next time you hear someone speaking in your favorite show or in, you know, a conversation. All right, are they saying ID t or D? for the ED. Let's look at some examples for T. Popped, walked, bluffed, laughed. I'm not saying laughed. I'm not saying laughed. I'm saying laughed, laughed. You laughed more. Attached, mashed, crossed, danced, <laughs> mixed. But I developed a system which rapidly transmits changes to every strand of DNA in the host's body. I've been very impressed with your portfolio and the exceptional commendations of your teachers. Now for D sounds. If the verb ends in a vowel sound or a voiced, vibrating, a voiced consonant sound, we're going to pronounce ED, D the D sound. Let's look at some vowel sound examples, okay? Employ, employed. Cry, cried. Play, played. At least I stayed at the post office, hmm? Now let's look at some voiced consonant ones. Failed, cleaned. I'm not saying cleaned or cleant. I'm saying cleaned. When I went back to check it, someone had cleaned up the blood. Yeah. 
This is exactly how I imagined it. Answered, robbed, mugged, hummed, used, quizzed, lived. Not livid, that's another word. <laughs> Not livid, lived. I wished I lived in that house. And like I mentioned before, when we're speaking naturally in conversation, many words are going to link together. So you have to pronounce things um, as a whole when we're talking about a sentence. Where is the T? What's coming after that T in the next word? The same goes with ED endings. For example, he popped in to say hi. All right, popped. After, there is going to be that vowel sound. So a lot of times we're gonna connect that T to the vowel sound, so popped in, all right? Instead of he popped in, I'm gonna say popped in. He popped in to say hi. I don't know, just popped in my head. They walked around the park. They walked around the park. They walked around the park. They walked around, walked around. We're gonna connect walked and around. They walked around. She walked around the city for two weeks, blindfolded. An excellent place to start practicing this is by putting it after an ed word. So for example, we needed it. Instead of saying it separately, we needed it, we can combine needed it. We needed it. Did it. Did it. We needed it. Where was all this confidence when you needed it in the audition? I attached it in the email. Attached it. Attached it. Instead of saying attached it, attached it. I attached it in the email. Attached it to the ribbon and I ate it. She cleaned it already. It's so hard for me to even like say it separately. So she cleaned it, right? We're gonna tag that it on. She cleaned it, cleaned it, cleaned it. All right, she cleaned it already. I cleaned it up really well. And Marina, I think that's it for me today with the pronunciation of letter T. Okay, Angela, thank you so much. What will be your biggest recommendation for all of the English language learners out there? Oh God, I could do a whole other video on this. Uh, there's a lot to say. Uh, I guess the first thing in regards to actual pronunciation, it would be to consider the sounds, uh, not the letters and consider sentences and where those letters are placed. Are they at the end of the word? Are they at the beginning of a word? That's going to influence pronunciation a lot. So pay attention to that. Um, if you are having difficulty pronouncing a word on its own, maybe put it in a sentence and try to see how you can make it flow better with a sentence. Just try it out, it might work. That's probably my first tip. And then my second tip is a little bit more like philosophical, I guess. Um, but just be patient with yourself. I think, you know, in my experience as a teacher, so many people are really worried about their pronunciation and their accent. And trust me, I'm learning different languages also. Um, and the pronunciation can really get you down sometimes because you feel like stupid or that you're talking like an infant. No offense to infants, okay? But don't worry about it. You're going to get better just because you're interested in getting better, all right? And it takes time. And your accent is not ugly. I love accents. And English is one of those languages where there are so many different accents. It's not just American or British or Australian. There are so many English language speakers. So just be patient, be kind to yourself. Of course, learn and get better, but just take your time. Angela, thank you so, so much. That was super helpful. I hope everyone watching really got something from today's video and that you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you guys soon. Marina, thanks again. Thank you guys so much for watching this video up to the very end. Uh, thank you so much for trusting this channel with your English language learning needs. Guys, please comment down below. Let us know if this video was helpful for you. Uh, please do not forget to subscribe. Do not forget to share this class with 
everyone you know who want to sound more American. Again, this is a process. Guys, and just a couple words of encouragement. It's an endless process. I see so many people here in the US who have been living here for 20 years, 30 years, and they're still working on their pronunciation. Like this is something that people who were born here, they just learn it as they grow. We have this additional task in our lives to master another language and you should be proud of it. And don't get ashamed if you make any mistakes, you're fine. You know, I sometimes punish myself for mispronouncing something, especially if I have a conversation with a native speaker, I mispronounce something and like, Five seconds later, I realized I mispronounced something like Marina, how bad? But I know like it doesn't really matter because we're building relationships here, not trying to be perfect in every single aspect. Thank you guys so much for watching this video up to the very end. Uh, check out linguageherb.com and uh, see you very soon. Bye bye.